Welcome back to the Leadership Cheat Code, where we unlock the cheat code to effective leadership. My name is Brian Vaughn, and today we're going to dive deep into introspective techniques that will help you enhance your leadership skills. These are tips all about self-reflection, self-awareness, and personal growth. So let's get started. The first tip to improve your leadership skills is self-reflection. Taking the time to examine your actions, your thoughts, your emotions can provide valuable insight. So here are two strategies to help you practice self-reflection effectively. Number one, start journaling. Grab a pen, get a notebook. Journaling allows you to explore your thoughts, your experiences, your challenges. Write down your leadership successes and failures and reflect on what you've learned from each situation. By regularly reviewing your entries, you'll gain a deeper understanding of your leadership style and areas for improvement. So here are three tips to make the most out of your leadership journaling experience. Number one is that consistency is the key. You have to be consistent when journaling. So make this a regular habit. Set aside dedicated time each day or each week to write in your leadership journal. Consistency will help you track your progress. It'll help you to identify patterns in your leadership behaviors and also provide a more comprehensive picture of your growth over time. Now, even if you don't have any major events to document, jot down your thoughts, your feelings, and any insight that you gain from your day-to-day -day leadership interactions. Small details can often lead to significant revelations later on. Number two is to be honest and use self-reflection as the tool that it is designed to be. Use your journal as a safe place to be brutally honest with yourself, right? This is your time to really, really hone in on your own mistakes, your own shortcomings, and any areas that you've identified that you need to improve. It is essential to be self-reflective and to learn from both successes and failures. This level of introspection will help you gain valuable insights into your own leadership style, your decision-making process, and how you handle challenges. It'll also help you to foster a growth mindset, encouraging you to embrace continuous improvement. Number three is to set specific goals and action plans for yourself. While journaling can help you gain insights, it's crucial to turn those revelations into actionable steps for improvement. Regularly reviewing your journal entries to identify reoccurring themes or areas that require attention. And then from there, you can just set specific leadership development goals and outline practical action plans to address those particular areas. Take time to break down your objectives into smaller achievable tasks that you can work on over, over time. This way, your journal becomes a tool for personal and professional growth, helping you to track your progress towards your leadership aspirations. Strategy number two is to seek feedback. This is critically important, is to be receptive to feedback. So actively seek feedback from your colleagues, from your subordinates, from your mentors, Ask for constructive and specific examples, right, of how you can enhance your own leadership skills. It's important to approach feedback with an open mind and a willingness to learn from the feedback. Incorporate the feedback, right? So make sure that when you receive the feedback, that you incorporate this feedback into your own self-reflection process. So here are three tips to effectively seek feedback and also to make the most of it. Number one is to create a safe and trusting environment for yourself and for the people who are giving you the feedback, right? So it's extremely important that when you are seeking that feedback, that you are establishing that safe and that trusted environment for all parties involved in this process. So many people may hesitate to, to give their honest feedback if they fear that there are going to be negative consequences or if they don't trust that their input is going to be valued. As a leader, you can encourage open communication by being approachable and also showing genuine interest in hearing other people's perspective. Assuring your colleagues and subordinates that the feedback is important uh, and that it's going to be used constructively to improve your own leadership skills. You right, so you got to be open to the feedback. That's the biggest thing is being open and receptive to receiving the feedback. And then when you are, you have to avoid becoming defensive or dismissive when that feedback is given to you. Right. This may discourage anyone from offering you feedback and giving you candid insights in the future. Number two is to ask specific and actionable questions, right? So when you're receiving this valuable feedback from uh, your peers and mentors and subordinates, 
you need to ask specific and actionable questions instead of just saying things like, well, how am I doing as a leader? Right? Or do you have any feedback for me? Mm, I don't have no feedback for you. Right? They're really not inclined to give us feedback because we're not really being uh, you know, specific in what we're really asking them. So you really have to stay away from uh, vague responses and really ask more targeted questions. So for example, you can inquire about a recent decision that you made and how it impacted the team, or you can ask for feedback on your communication style, uh, during a, a specific meeting, a specific situation. Uh, and so by providing context for the feedback, you might make it easier for others to offer meaningful insights that can you know, really aid you in your own leadership journey. Number three is to use feedback for continuous improvement. So receiving this feedback on a regular basis is super beneficial for you and that it helps you in your development and your continuous improvement efforts. So take time to reflect on the feedback that you've received and use it to identify patterns or reoccurring themes. So focus on both strengths and areas of, of opportunities and development. So acknowledging your strengths, knowing your strengths, and just finding ways to leverage them further while also creating a plan to address the identified areas for improvement is going to take you a long way as a leader. You need to ensure that you are setting specific goals and action steps to work on those aspects of your leadership style. So remember that that growth is an ongoing process, right? It is, it is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process. And so by actively incorporating this feedback into your own self-improvement journey, you'll continue to evolve as a more effective leader. Tip two is a big one. Oh my gosh, this is a big piece because the ability to be self-aware as a leader is critical to your own growth and development. If you're not self-aware, how can you identify the areas where you truly need to grow and to develop? And so it really does involve you taking time to understand your strengths, your weaknesses, your values, and your emotions. So here are some strategies to help you enhance your self-awareness. Number one is mindfulness practice. So set aside a few minutes each day for mindfulness practice. So this is all about taking time to engage in activities like meditation or deep breathing exercises to focus your attention on the present moment. This will help you to develop a better understanding of your own thoughts, your emotions, and your reactions, right? And your triggers and identifying what really sets you off. And then over time, you'll become more self-aware and better equipped to manage yourself and others. So here are some tips to enhance your mindfulness practice. Number one is to start small and to be consistent. So when beginning your mindfulness practice, it is essential to start small with manageable increments of time. Don't try to just eat the elephant all at once. Don't try to just jump into the pool with both feet, right? Small, manageable increments of time, even if it's just five minutes a day, right? Those five minutes a day can make a huge difference consistency is that key, right? It is the key to reaping the benefits of mindfulness. So set a specific time each day for your practice and gradually increase the duration as you become more comfortable with the process. Number two is non-judgmental awareness, right? So during your mindfulness practice, aim to observe your thoughts, your emotions without judgment. Don't, this is not the time to analyze or criticize your thoughts and emotions. So when thoughts do arise, right? Don't go through that process. Don't criticize yourself for having those thoughts. Don't get carried away by them. Instead, just view them as just passing clouds in the sky of your mind. Don't even give them any thought and attention. Just gently redirect your attention back to your breathing or your chosen focal point. Right. So practicing non-judgmental awareness fosters self-compassion and allows you to better understand the patterns of your own mind. Number three, mm, mindful eating. That's a huge one, even for me at times. Right. This is the ability for us to just really be mindful of the foods that we are eating, right? So before eating, you know, take time to moment uh, to just observe the colors, the textures, and the smells of your food. Food do be smelling good, right? So take time to enjoy it, but make sure you're eating the, the right types of food. Uh, you know, take time to really enjoy the food, chew your food, savor each bite, pay attention to the taste and the sensations of your food, especially if you're eating really good, really, really good food, right? Uh, you know, mindful eating not only helps you enjoy your meals, uh, more, but it also helps to promote better digestion, gut health, uh, and it also allows you to prevent overeating uh, to increase your awareness of those those different types of cues. Because when you're full, you know you're full, and you shouldn't be overeating. So when you feel that fullness happening, take a moment, stop, 
and just put the food aside, right? Mindful eating, being mindful of what you're eating and then what you're putting into your body and to res- recognize when you are full from that perspective. And then number two, uh, strategy number two is uh, to conduct a strength and weakness assessment. So take time to assess your own strengths and weaknesses as a leader. I know people don't like to focus on weaknesses, right? But you, whether you want to call them blind spots or areas of opportunities or areas of development, uh, whatever you want to identify it as, right? It is those particular areas that you need to identify where you are excelling and those areas that you can improve. So once you've taken the time to identify your areas of opportunities or weakness, sit down and develop an action plan to address those accordingly. Additionally, leveraging your strengths can empower your team and drive success. So here are three tips for conducting a strengths and weakness assessment uh, for you as a leader. Number one is to seek honest feedback. I know I talked about it a little bit earlier, but feedback is one of the keys to effective leadership. And the more you receive it, the better you are going to be as a leader. And so get get feedback from every everyone, right? That 360 feedback coming from your team members, your peers, your supervisors, your mentors. Go through that process once again of creating a safe and open environment where people feel comfortable sharing their honest opinions. Because if they don't, they're not going to share it with you. So use things like anonymous surveys or uh, one-on-one conversations. These things can be effective ways to collect this feedback. So remember to emphasize that the assessment is not about judgment, but it is about understanding and growth. Make sure you're listening actively without becoming defensive and taking note of patterns or reoccurring comments. Honestly, you know, this feedback is going to help you gain valuable insights into your leadership style and behavior. But the key is that you have to be open to it. One, you have to make sure that you are self-aware. Talked about that earlier. If you're not self-aware, then you are not going to receive the feedback effectively because then you're going to get defensive. So make sure that you are self-aware. Make sure you're creating a safe environment to receive this feedback and use that feedback for growth and development. Number two is to use a SWOT analysis, right? So, of course, most of you are familiar with what a SWOT analysis is. It is all about identifying your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so it is a structured approach to evaluating your leadership qualities. Uh, I use it all the time, whether I'm using it from a personal perspective or even within the context of an organization uh, to really identify what my own strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are as a leader and also as a team. So utilizing a SWOT analysis uh, really helps you to go through the process of listing out you know, those strengths and weaknesses Uh, that you may have as a leader. And then going through the process of identifying your opportunities to utilize your strengths to benefit uh, the team and also the organization. Simultaneously, uh, you may have the ability to recognize, you know, potential threats or challenges that your weaknesses may pose and how they can impact your leadership effectiveness. This analysis will provide a clear picture of where to focus your efforts for improvement and how to leverage your strengths to maximum advantage. Number three is to leverage strengths to empower your team. Once you've identified your strengths, find ways to use them to empower your team, whether that's through delegation uh, and and giving your team tasks that align with your strengths to those team members, allowing them to learn from your expertise while building their own skill set. Your strengths can serve as a role model for your team and to inspire them to excel in areas of expertise. So take time to encourage open discussion about strengths amongst your teams, creating a culture of mutual respect and collaboration. So when leaders utilize their strengths to support and guide their team, it really does foster a more cohesive and productive work environment. Okay, let's talk about tip number three, which is all about value alignment. And so your ability as a leader to align your leadership style with your core values is crucial for long-term success. So here are two strategies to help you ensure that your values are integrated into your leadership. So strategy number one is to define your core values, right? So take some time to identify your core values as a leader. What do you stand for? What type of principles are the most important to you? Write them down and prioritize them. You know, use these these values as a compass to guide your decision-making and your actions as a leader. So here are some things that you can do to help you define your core values as a leader. All right, so number one is to reflect on your own personal experiences. So look back on your life and your career to identify key moments 
uh, and experiences that have shaped your values. Take time to consider those times when you felt the most fulfilled, uh, the most proud, or the most motivated as a leader. Conversely, think about the moments when you face uh, you know, tough challenges and how you responded to those challenges. By reflecting on these experiences, you can uncover patterns that reveal your underlying principles and values. It is critical that you do this, right? To the establishment of your own leadership principles, your core values that guide and direct every action and behavior that you take as a leader. Number two is to seek feedback from others. Once again, feedback is absolutely crucial. And I'm going to tell you now, in a lot of my talks, you're going to hear me talk about feedback because it is crucially important. The ability to receive feedback is crucial to your development as a leader. We think that we're doing great, but then we may not in the eyes of everyone else. So getting their perspective helps us to develop our own leadership competencies and capabilities better, right? So get feedback all the time. And so sometimes we don't even value feedback, right? We don't even appreciate the feedback at times. I know people who don't take feedback very, very well. And so feedback is important because it does help you to grow and to develop. So take those times to seek feedback from colleagues, from mentors, uh, or team members about what they perceive as your core values. You may think, oh, I'm honest and you know I have integrity, and they may not see that, right? So always go back and get feedback from others. Use that constructive feedback to give you that window into your own leadership actions and to make sure that your actions align with your overall intentions. It may also help to discover aspects of your own leadership style that you might not be aware of. Feedback is crucial. Feedback is key. Make sure you're getting enough feedback, a lot of feedback, all the time feedback to help your own growth and development. And then number three is to prioritize and refine your core values. So after you've identified these core values and you've taken the time to prioritize them based upon you know, their significance to you as a leader, consider how each of those values impacts your decision-making, your communication, and also your interactions with your team. It's essential to have a clear hierarchy of these values as this is going to guide your actions in times of uncertainty, uh, challenging situations, difficult choices. This gives you the ability to really act out your core values in those tough scenarios. Then you may want to go back and kind of refine that list, right? By narrowing down uh, the most essential values, typically no more than three or five, just to keep them manageable and focused. All right, let's talk about strategy number two, which is to lead by example. And of course, it's one of the pinnacle behaviors that you need to be able to display as a leader because people are looking to you as a leader. And they're looking to make sure that you are leading by example. And because what you require of them, you should be doing as well. And this gives you the ability to just demonstrate your values through those actions. You as a leader have to consistently model the behaviors that you expect from your team. All right. So when your actions align with your own values, you inspire trust and build a positive culture within your own team and organization. So here are some tips to help you lead effectively by example. Number one, transparent communication. Communication is Communication is key, All right? We talked about this a gazillion times. Communication is key. Your ability to demonstrate open and transparent communication with your team members is paramount to the effectiveness of your leadership. This is not only about just sharing information, right? But it's also about just being honest about challenges and successes and failures and communicating this information openly to your team. Because whether we like to see it or not, whether we know it or not, our team knows things that we just don't see. They may not just tell us, but they see when we make mistakes. They see when we go through challenges. They see when we have successes and failures. So why not just be open about it, right? It helps your team to develop uh, this environment where they can also talk about it as well. It creates that culture of collaboration and trust amongst the team. So don't, don't try to hide your mistakes. Don't try to hide difficult issues. Instead, address them proactively with your team. Involve your team into finding solutions. So by doing so, you set a precedent for open communication and you really encourage your team to do the same. Next, once again, is to embrace constructive feedback. Show that you are receptive to feedback and that you are willing to make improvements. There's nothing like a leader 
who says they're open for feedback and doesn't take it. Actively seek feedback from your team and genuinely, right, genuinely consider their suggestions. So when you've received constructive criticism, acknowledge it graciously and take steps to implement positive changes. By being open to the feedback, you demonstrate humility. And trust me, it takes humility to receive feedback from others, right? And it shows that you have a willingness to grow, which encourages a culture of continuous improvement and fosters a sense of psychological safety within your team, right? That psychological safety really helps your team members provide the feedback that you really need to hear. It gives them that space. It creates that environment for them to open up and be honest with you about areas that you may not see, those blind spots that have not been identified. So be open to receiving constructive feedback. Number three is work-life balance advocacy, right? So prioritize having a work-life balance and demonstrate that you value as a leader that well-being is important to you and to your team members. Avoid promoting a culture of just overworking and burning out and being in the office all the time and being on the computer until nine o'clock at night and early to rise and late to bed. Work-life balance. You don't want people to burn out. You don't want them to overwork because it causes health issues, psychological issues, stress. You don't want any of those in your lives, nor do you want to end the lives of your team members because it helps reduce productivity, efficiency, effectiveness. So promote work-life balance. Encourage your employees to take breaks. Use their vacation time. That's why they have it, right? That's why companies offer vacation time for you to use it. This way, they can maintain a healthy work-life balance. Avoid sending work-related emails or messages during non-work hours to respect their personal time. I don't call employees after work. I, if I need to speak to you, I will speak to you the next day. It is not that important that I have to interrupt your own personal time to talk about organizational matters. I just won't do it. So don't do that as a leader. Respect their personal time, right? So when when your team sees that you prioritize work-life balance and that you are taking care of yourself, they're going to feel supported and they're going to be more likely to do the same. On to tip number four. So to be an effective leader, you must commit to continuous personal growth as a leader, right? So that's the thing. To be an effective leader, you must be committed to continuous personal growth. So how do you do that? So let me share some strategies to foster personal growth. Number one is to recognize that this is a lifelong learning pursuit, right? You're going to be learning all the way. Learning never stops. So you as a leader need to cultivate a thirst for knowledge and commit to lifelong learning. Take time to read books, uh, listen to podcasts like The Leadership Cheat Code, right? Listen to this one. Uh, there's other great ones as well but make this a part of your own leadership journey, the leadership cheat code. Attend workshops, of course, uh, attend seminars, and also you know, listen to audiobooks. Those are great as well. Seek out opportunities for other areas of professional development. Uh, but the idea is so that you can embrace new horizons, new perspectives when it comes to learning and growing as a leader. So how do you go through this process of implementing a lifelong learning strategy. Number one is to create a lifelong learning plan, right? Create a learning plan for yourself. So instead of just randomly saying, oh, I'm just going to go take in a lot of information or I'm just going to go watch this particular podcast or listen to this particular person, create a plan for yourself, right? Create a structured plan that aligns with your personal and professional goals. Take time to identify areas that you want to improve upon as a leader and research the best resources to achieve those objectives. Not every resource is going to help you. You may get some nuggets, but identify the best resources to achieve those objectives. And one of those resources is a leadership cheat code. Just It's just as an FYI, right? What you can do, how you can do it. Uh, so as an example, let's say that you want to improve your communication skills. So find books or online courses specifically tailored to that subject. Take the content from that book, right? I've always, always tell people, they always, knowledge is power. Not necessarily. Applied knowledge is power because I now have the ability to apply what I've learned to real life situations, right? So apply the knowledge that you're learning from, whether it's seminars or podcasts or books, but apply that to your everyday leadership journey. By having this thought out plan, you're going to be super focused. You're going to make sure that you have meaningful progress in your own leadership development. 
Number two is to engage in active learning. Passive consumption of information can be less effective than retaining knowledge and applying it practically. Instead, adopt an active learning approach. Take notes while you're reading books uh, or while you're listening to podcasts uh, and really summarize the key takeaways that you're getting from these mediums, right? So engage in discussion with your colleagues or peers about the concepts that you've learned to reinforce your own understanding. Uh, consider joining a, or creating a study group uh, to foster an environment of shared learning and exchange of ideas. So let me let me tell you a quick story. So I am in charge of a leadership development program uh, at my organization. And one of the things that we're doing in this leadership development program is reading a book every, uh, well, not reading an, an entire book, but we're reading one book uh, and we're breaking down those chapters every single month. And we're really having an in-depth, one hour long conversation on that chapter and how that chapter applies to their own leadership development. So maybe things like that, but the ability for you to take the concepts in things like books and podcasts and apply them to your leadership journey is going to be critical for you in your development as a leader. Next is teach others, right? So one of the best ways to solidify your own understanding of a topic is by teaching others, right? This teach to learn concept. By your ability to teach others, you are going to learn so much more, right? So whether it's it's formally mentoring someone in uh, your field or is simply just explaining the concept to a colleague, teaching requires you to organize and articulate the knowledge effectively. You are going to learn so much in the preparation of delivering that information to someone else. That is a huge rewarding experience just to see how you personally benefit from the learning journey and how the people that you are explaining it to how they're learning from your expertise, right? So teaching not only helps others grow, but it absolutely enhances your leadership skills by developing your own ability to communicate complex ideas clearly and empathetically. That teach to learn concept is, I don't know who invented it, but whoever invented that teach to learn concept, hands down, probably one of the best ways for leaders to learn something is the ability to now teach that same concept back to one another. Okay, strategy number two is to find a mentor. Mentorship is great. I've had several mentors in my own career, and mentors can help guide and inspire you on your leadership journey. So look for someone who has achieved uh, success in, in your field or someone that demonstrates the qualities that you aspire to possess. I have been engaged in mentorship relationships, whether I have been the mentee or the mentor, and you learn so much from both perspectives, right? So this allows you as a leader to just have regular engagement uh, with that mentor. That way you can take time to, to seek their advice, their opinion, uh, and their expertise and experiences and learn from those experiences. So here are some things that you can do to find a mentor and to benefit from that mentor's experience to help you on your own learning journey. Number one is to have clarity in your goals and in your expectations. So before you approach anybody to be a potential mentor, take some time to clarify your own goals and what you hope to gain from mentorship. Understand the specific areas where you want guidance, uh, where you're seeking to improve your own leadership skills. Uh, by having a clear idea of your expectations, it's not only going to help you find the right mentor, but it's also going to make the relationship more productive because you have clarity in what you're truly asking this person to do for you in this particular role. So that when you approach this potential mentor, you can clearly articulate your goals and demonstrate your commitment to learning and growing as a leader. This is going to show them that you value their time and their expertise. Number two is proactivity and initiative. So while having a mentor is valuable and it's critical to success, right? The success of the mentorship largely depends on your own initiative and proactive approach. They can give you all the information all day, but if you never actually take it and apply it, then it really means, really means nothing. Learn from that mentor. Take their expertise and experiences and apply it to your leadership. Take their advice. That's why you're there. That's why you ask for a mentor so that they can help you understand your leadership journey. So be proactive about it. And that could be you taking the lead in scheduling uh, your regular meetings or checking in with your mentor, making sure that you come prepared with specific questions and challenges that you are facing. Take time to share your progress and the steps you've taken based on previous advice. 
Uh, so by showing that you take their guidance seriously and applying it to your leadership style, you're going to make this whole mentoring experience a much more rewarding uh, process for you and for your mentor. Okay, so number three is diverse perspectives. Uh, so why it's important to find a mentor who really excels in your field and who possesses all the qualities that you are looking to aspire to have. Don't limit yourself to a single mentor or just a single perspective. Seek out additional mentors or advisors from different backgrounds and experiences. There's no rule that says, I got to have one mentor. I've had several at the same time. These different perspectives can offer unique insights and broaden your understanding of leadership, right? Because they all come from various different places, various different life experiences and journeys. And so you're going to get a lot of information, a wealth of information from various types of mentors. So take time to participate in things like networking events, uh, join leadership development programs, uh, or seek mentors even from outside of your media industry. You'll be surprised what you can learn from others who are successful in their own right in their field and how that can apply to your field uh, and your growth as a leader. So take time to embrace diverse perspectives as this can help you to develop a well-rounded approach to leadership and to adapt to various styles effectively. Let's talk about tip number five, which is introspective decision-making. Uh, introspective decision-making involves just really making thoughtful choices based on self-awareness and careful consideration. So here are two strategies that you can use to make better decisions. Uh, number one is to implement thought experiments. Uh, thought experiments are great, right? It gives you the ability to, to practice uh, and really examine the potential outcomes of your decisions. It allows you to imagine the consequences of just different choices and to evaluate the long-term impact of those choices. Uh, this type of exercise will help you to make a more informed decision and to anticipate uh, potential challenges that may come down, come down the pike. So you are setting up scenarios where you're thinking creatively about how to resolve certain situations and how you can make effective decisions in those situations. So here are some ways to do that. Right Here are some, some tips to effectively practice thought experiments. Number one is to embrace creativity and imagination. So when you're conducting thought experiments, just let your imagination just run wild, just run crazy, right? Don't restrict yourself to conventional or realistic scenarios. Explore a wide range of possibilities, even those that seem to be out there, right? To be far-fetched. The goal is to stretch your thinking and to consider outcomes uh, from unexpected angles, right? To think about, well, what if this happened? Well, how would I resolve it? By embracing this type of creativity, you uncover potential risk and opportunities that might not be immediately apparent. And then number two is to involve diverse perspectives. So to enhance the depth and quality of your own thought experiments, invite other people, get other people involved in this process and get their perspectives, right? So get input from your colleagues, your friends, your mentors, even individuals outside of your field of expertise, these different viewpoints can challenge your own assumptions and can also introduce new ideas, leading to a more robust analysis of those potential outcomes. And it also helps your quality of decision making to grow exponentially. This type of collaborative approach can also help to identify mm, blind spots or weaknesses that you may have in your own decision making process. All right. Number three is to combine qualitative and quantitative analysis. Right? So going through that type of experiment is going to involve both qualitative assessments of these potential scenarios. So while this is valuable for exploring broader implications, uh, the ability to incorporate quantitative analysis can provide a more structured understanding of the potential impacts. Uh, so assigning different probabilities and values to different outcomes can help you prioritize your decisions based upon these potential risks and rewards. Right, So by the ability for you as a leader to to combine the, both the qualitative and the quantitative approaches, you can make a more informed choice and have a clearer picture of the possible consequences. Okay, so on to strategy number two, which is reflective pause. So before you are making any type of important decision, take a reflective pause, right? Step back, analyze the situation, consider the bigger picture. Give yourself time to really think critically and gather all relevant information before you are moving forward, right? Before you decide to take action. This type of pause is really going to allow you to make decisions with greater clarity and, and confidence. So here are some things that you can do. Three things specifically that I'm going to give you. 
Uh, number one is to set a minimum time limit. So when you are taking a reflective pause, it is important to give yourself enough time to analyze the situation thoroughly. However, it is also essential that you don't get stuck in, in overthinking or overanalysis, right? Leading to analysis paralysis. All right, so set a, a, a minimum time uh, for your reflective pause, such as it could be 15 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, uh, depending on the complexity of the decision that you need to make, right? So during this time, focus on gathering all the relevant information, you know, weighing pros and cons, uh, and considering potential outcomes. Having a time constraint is going to encourage you to be more focused and efficient during your reflection. So when you limit your time and you collapse that time frame, right, you're not giving yourself an hour, three hours to think about it. I got 15 minutes. I have 30 minutes to think this thing through. You're going to be more focused and more engaged in your process. And number two is to write down your thoughts. And so putting your thoughts to, to paper is very, very powerful. It's a very powerful tool that you can use uh, during this reflective pause. So as you analyze the situation and you're considering different aspects, jot down your observations, jot down your concerns and ideas. This process of externalizing your thoughts helps you to organize your thinking, and it really gives you a clearer view of the actual problem. Uh, additionally, it allows you to revisit your notes later uh, to gain uh, additional insight and to identify any potential patterns that you may have overlooked. And number three is to seek diverse perspectives. I've talked about that many times in this, in this interaction, right, is to seek diverse perspectives because not all the time do I, as a leader, have the best perspective or the most defined perspective or the most clear perspective. And so I need other people to come in and to help me really ascertain, is this the right, the right pattern for me to go or the right direction for me to go in? Uh, is this the right way I need to implement something, right? And so a lot of times we can get trapped in our own biases and assumptions. And when we have other people's perspectives come in, that can help us to uh, really look at the situation from all different different angles. So my advice is to actively seek out different perspectives from others who have relevant knowledge or experiences in the matter. Engage in discussions with your colleagues, your mentors, or other SMEs uh, to gain insight uh, and challenge your own thought process. Hearing different perspectives can help you as a leader to identify blind spots and to consider factors that you may not have even thought of before. However, make sure that you approach these discussions with an open mind uh, and a willingness to consider alternative viewpoints. And there you have it, leaders. By implementing these five introspective tips, you will be well on your way to enhancing your leadership skills. Remember, self-reflection, self-awareness, values alignment, personal growth, and introspective decision-making are all crucial elements of effective leadership. Start applying these today to your leadership strategy. And when you do, your leadership skills are going to soar. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, to unlock your leadership effectiveness, you must master the cheat code. See you next time.